Hey, welcome to Life Church. I'm Steve Gambill, and I'm so glad that we have this time together today. The truth is, God wants to do great things in your life, greater than you can even imagine. So, as we join with our worship team at Life Church and then go on to open the word together, we pray that God would speak directly to your circumstances, directly to your heart, and remind you of how much He loves you. Come on, let's get started. and that has been chosen by our team because we realize for many of us, life can become stormy, life can become distracted, life can become pulled in a million different directions and it's good to remind ourselves from time to time that actually we all have the ability to drop anchor. We actually, are many things we may not be able to do, 
But actually, we can do this one thing. We can say, I'm putting my hope in God. We can say, I'm gonna trust Him. We can say, I'm gonna pray, pray because I don't know what else to say. We can worship. We can choose to be in the house. We can connect our life to God's community. There are a lot of things that you can't do, but those are things you can do. And sometimes we act as if we have no power when the truth is that we've just forgotten that we do have power to make some choices in our life. And today, I wanna help you again in this series. And I guess I wanna come at it a little bit in a different direction because I believe illustrations are very helpful. So in a minute, these seats up here will explain themselves as I begin to try and illustrate what I think some of our lives look like. And maybe we'll have a little bit of fun with that. But I wanna anchor what I'm going to say in the verse that is probably one of the biggest verses that I um, have come to love and to wrap my head around. And when all things seem to be out of order, I come back to this as an anchor verse for me. And it's Colossians 1 verse 15. And I'm gonna read it to you from the Message Bible. And I want you to think about the words that I am now reading to you in case you're wondering if anything in your life is out of order, how does it get back in order? That's what I wanna give you as a gift today. And so it says, we look at this son, we look at Jesus and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at him and see God's original purpose in everything created, for everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank, of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence and he holds it all together right up to this moment. My life's out of control, God holds it together. I don't understand what's going on, God holds it together. I've had the worst week, God holds it together. Right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. So spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. And not only that, it gets better, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, Say, and things. People and things, animals and atoms get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies all because of his death and his blood that poured down from the cross. Church, you should be excited about what I'm reading right now. This is mind blowing. Everything, everything, absolutely everything, people, things, animals, atoms. God has the ability to bring it all together, to fit it together in vibrant harmony. Even the things that are in discord right now, God has a way of bringing it into harmony because you yourselves are a case study of what he does. At one time you had your back turned to God, thinking rebellious thoughts, giving him trouble, and some of you really did give him trouble every chance you got. But now, by giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you, Christ brought you over to God's side and put your lives together, whole and holy in his presence. You don't walk away from a gift like that if you are backsliding in here this morning come home if you're drifting from God come home why because you don't walk away from a gift like that what do you do you stay grounded you stay anchored you stay fastened you stay fixed and you stay steady in that bond of trust constantly tuned in say tuned in tuned in to the message careful not to be distracted or diverted. Amen. Constantly tuned in to the message. Careful not to be distracted or diverted. This morning I want to talk around this subject of anchored by asking you the question, is every aspect of your life tuned in to the God who holds all things together. 
Is every aspect of your conversation and your choices tuned in to the voice and the Word of God? I chose to illustrate this morning in a way that everyone can relate, especially the men. Yes, men, I thought about you this morning. Because all of you are about to relate to how I'm gonna explain to you how our life can become distorted and out of tune and maybe not be anchored. And I'm going to do that by talking to you about one of these. And I wanna ask a question. Who has got the remote control for your life? Who has got the remote control for your life? Now I know I am touching on a testing subject inside some homes right now because some of you men believe, I got the power! And you do not, you do not like giving over the power of the remote control in your household. But I would take it a step further this morning and say some of you spiritually have a problem with handing over to the right person the remote control for your life. And so I want to ask my helpers, my willing, I hope, helpers to come up here and begin to help me illustrate what I want to put to you this morning. For many of us have created a scenario in our life that God wants us to adjust. He wants us to retune in. And so up come my helpers and you're gonna have to encourage them. They look like something out of a Kylie Minogue dance video. Thank you, helpers. Thank you, helpers. The things that the staff do in order to help me make a message come to life. So we've had a whole Blue Peter thing going on in the office this week. Aren't you glad that you said yes to volunteering this morning? They didn't tell you what you're doing until they put one of those on your head. Are you a new student by any chance? Welcome to the academy. That is awesome. You sign up for our church academy and the next thing we make you look an idiot on stage, all for the cause. And by the way, you're live online too, so smile for the camera. Maybe you don't get it when we talk about a physical ship anchor. But maybe this is gonna come home to you today. That's my prayer. That maybe when we talk about everything in your life tuning in to the one that holds it all together, maybe you think that that's what your life looks like. But maybe I can ask you to think again. Because the fact is, the more we do life, And the more things we add to our life, we begin to add to our life almost like different channels. So on BBC One, we may have relationships. And on BBC Two, maybe that's our channel of life where we deal with our finances. Maybe on ITV, this is our personality, it's who I am, it's what I like, it's who I choose to do life with, it's my values as a person. And then we have our spiritual channel where I do church or I, you know, read the Bible every now and again and I have a belief system and then maybe we have a channel where our thoughts are consumed with our future or even our fears or our dreams. and. And what happens in life is we begin to build our life with a different box set for each one of these. And maybe right now you're young and so the financial channel hasn't appeared in your life, but it will. Or maybe right now you are kind of not really even thinking about your future, but there'll be a time when there'll be a dream awakening in you or a fear about the future awakening in you and all of a sudden a channel just popped up on the screen. Now, God's idea is that every single one of these channels, where's my final helper, would actually find its purpose and find its identity and find its value in Him. But what happens in life is we instead do our life, here's my shiny helper. You got the shiny box, well done. 
And the idea, see what I did here? Sky one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The idea is that here's the everything should be in him, right? So the idea is that relationships should be in him. Finances should be in him. Your identity should be in him. Your spiritual well-being should be in him. Your future, your fears and your hopes should be in here. So these all should be inside here. But what we do is we have a different remote for every single one of these in our life. And they are handed out to different people or different emotions at any given season of our life. And so we have the relationship channel that's running and the relationship channel, maybe it's a new relationship that you just begun and you feel all these feelings about this relationship and you feel all gooey on the inside and isn't it awesome? And before you know it, you have given the remote over to the person that just entered your life. And when they push the button, you fast forward. And when they press the other button, you stop. And when they press rewind, you go backwards. And when they press play, you play. <laughs> and we hand the remote control to someone else for that area of our life. Maybe it's a divorce that you are in the midst of and all of the emotions and all of the frustration and all of the anger and you have handed the remote of what happens next to someone else and now you're waiting for a decision to be made or, or, or something to be said and you're responding because someone else has the remote control of your life or maybe it's in your finances and God's idea is that you would invest in one of these. This is called a universal remote. And the idea of a universal remote is that you program every one of those channels to be controlled by this singular remote. So you don't now have multiple remotes out there which you can lose or, or give to the wrong person at any given time. You have one remote and the universal remote that God has given every single one of you for your life is this. This is the universal remote. Why do you think the Bible talks about relationships? Because it wants to be the remote for your relationships. Why do you think the Bible talks about money? Do you think God's broke? Do you think God's put money scriptures in there because He needs your money because there's not enough gold in heaven? Do you think he put money scriptures in there just to wind you up? He put money and finance scriptures in there because he wants you to run your finances through the universal remote of the Word of God. Why do you think God in here speaks about your character and your identity and your choices in your attitude and, and your self-control and your anger? Why do you think all that is in here? Because it needs to be the universal remote for you as a person. Listen, and so it goes on. Every single area of your life, everything, atoms, animals, people, things, everything is in here. And God's remote control is supposed to control in a good way the choices you make. It's supposed to help you know how to move forward. It's supposed to help you know what not to rewind. It helps you know where to step up and where to step back. It helps you know what conversation to say off to and what conversation to say on to. And yet so many of us are frightened to give over our remote control and swap it for this remote control because some of us just like the power of the flicker way too much. i
Hey, as we finish our time together, I want to ask you, have you ever invited Jesus in your life? You know, I was at a point in my life, I didn't know who Jesus was. I had to pray a prayer and say, Jesus, I believe you're real. Would you come inside my heart? Forgive me of my sins and my past mistakes. And Jesus did, and he's changed my life as a result of that. That's what the Bible teaches in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says this, it says that if you believe, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. So why do you right now, in your own way and in your own words, ask Jesus in your heart. It will be the best decision that you ever make.